I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Welcome back. So today we're going to do an introduction to special functions. I've gotten a couple of requests around this, and I just want to be clear on one thing. Special functions are more limited on Ethos than they are on OpenTX, because a couple of the big ones on OpenTX have now moved on to other areas, most notably the override. So let's fire up the radio. And you'll notice that uh, it's complaining, failsafe is not set. This is not actually bound to a model. Uh, this is a copy of my Escapade 61 uh, file that has been modified for teaching purposes. Now, to get to special functions, you tap on the model icon, and you page over to the second page, and it's right there. Now you notice I have one here already. If you see this white G, that means it's a global special function. Certain special functions can be global, which means they apply to all of your models. And global is all or nothing. There's no way currently to exempt a global special function from some of your models if you don't want it on some, but you do want it on others. But this is my write logs. So this means that no matter what I'm doing, no matter what load model I have loaded, I'm writing my logs. Uh, this is the only one I really do as a global. Uh, the simple reason that I fly a variety of aircraft, a DLG doesn't want the same set of special functions as a 40 size trainer. So outside of that, write logs, I've got that set to global. We'll just go in here and take a look at it. So in here, the first one is the action. And in the drop down, there's everything you can set. So you can reset. And that is selectable what you reset. That's typically for telemetry or timers. Screenshot takes a screenshot, writes it to your NAND or SD card. Set failsafe allows you to capture your failsafe on a button. I would very, very much recommend if you're going to use set failsafe, have a logical switch with an interlock that triggers it, not just a switch. Play track plays an audio track that lives in slash audio. Not slash audio slash EN or slash audio slash FR. Uh, unlike OpenTX or EdgeTX, which are in sounds slash EN, sounds slash FR, whatever your localized radio setting is, it's two two letter code for that under sounds. No, they live in slash audio. The other key piece to note is that you cannot call a system sound. So yes, I have sounds in slash audio, slash EN, slash system. They're not available to play track. They work, however, and play value. When you pick a value, it can be any, val any valid value. You have haptic. That means if it goes live, it buzzes. And you've got write logs, which is what I have selected. The state in a new special function that you've just created will always be disabled. You have to go and do the configuration, then turn it on. Main reason for this is if you set something that's going to chirp every five seconds, you don't have to deal with it chirping every five seconds until you're done with the setup. Active condition, same active condition. This is the key piece. This is what's going to trigger the function. So this can be any true false value in the radio, just like the active condition in your mixes and everywhere else. There is a caveat there. If you want to set a global one, the active condition has to be globally valid. That means it needs to be a system value or a switch or always on. You cannot use a logical switch, even if you've gone and cut and pasted that one into all your models, it's still local on each model. It's not global, only global active conditions can have global set. The other piece is, is the action calls something that's model specific. And this is particularly for reset and play value. If it's a model specific, like a telemetry item that is not in the radio itself, you cannot make it global. Global has to be global values in every setting that is selectable for you to set the special function as global. 
Now, we're in the uh, write logs, so you've got a write interval. I've got 250 milliseconds, so mine writes four times a second. Don't set it too fast. I would really not recommend setting faster than 100 milliseconds. You will run into problems because the write speed on these radios to the car to the NAND is not that fast. You cannot go and do 10 millisecond writes. It's just not going to work. You're going to lock up the entire radio. 250 milliseconds, four times a second is good. One second, probably fine. And then in this particular case, you can select whether or not you're recording sticks, pots, and sliders, switches, and logical switches. These are values in the radio you might want in your logs. I set them all on because when I'm debugging, I want to see everything going on. They do eat memory, and the more stuff you write, the slower your write interval has to be. So if you're going to track one thing, like if you just want to track RSSI and RX battery, yeah, I wouldn't go 10 milliseconds, maybe 50 milliseconds. The main reason there is you're not getting new values every time necessarily. But you could get away with, say, a 50 millisecond write interval if you're only tracking those two values. I'm tracking a couple of dozen inherently right here, so I want the slower write value. Okay, I'll just back out. You'll notice there's no value in here because this is write logs. It doesn't have a value. So let's add a new one. And it starts off, we'll go to reset. We're going to go enable and always on. And I'm going to just pick an easy one. Now global is valid. So I have flight data, which includes your tele all timers, whole telemetry timers, and specific telemetry items. And then you can just go through there. So flight data, reset your flight data. That's full reset. You can reset your full set of timers, your whole telemetry or specific timers or telemetry. So if I go in and pick telemetry and we'll pick something that I totally, acceleration Y. You'll notice my global went gray because that is a model specific one. That is the Y accelerate, accelerometer in my RB35S. This is copied from a model that's got an RB35S installed still working through the setup on that. I have not nailed down everything. The model hasn't flown yet. But this is a good demonstration of if you go and you set global to, you want to set global to on, it's got to be a global value. If we go there and we pick, yeah, let's see if we, if there's something I've got, huh, RX battery. Still can't set global all timers. Now I can set global. All timers is global. Because it's setting a whole batch and it doesn't care how many timers you've got. You've got a Lua that has gone and created a bunch of timers. If I recall correctly, in a Lua you can set up to eight. In the UI you've got access to three. But all timers is valid global. Whole telemetry is valid global. Reset flight is valid global. Anything model specific is not. Sorry, it looks like I'm getting messaged. I'm just going to turn that off for now. Okay, so screenshot. Screenshot's super easy. Disable, enable, active condition, and you're global. Okay, screenshot can be global so long as your active condition can be global. This one's super easy. You can see if I enable it. And as we roll through here, you'll notice that uh, the active condition generally doesn't change because I've already set it. Set failsafe again. The one caveat here is external module or internal module. Which one are you setting it to? An external module. There's nothing really fancy here. I don't recommend you doing this as global because you can accidentally send a really bad failsafe. I would strongly recommend you use a logical switch that's tied to a calibration flight mode or some sort of interlock where you have to positively do two things before you set failsafe. 
play track. This one is a little bit more complex. This can actually be global. Um, and the other piece is, if you go in here, you'll notice I've got some WAV files. I will show you where those WAV files live. Just a reminder, they're in slash audio, but I'll walk through in the file uh, manager after we go through the rest of this one, and then we can go back and look at the others. So you've got a repeat option. It can be once or up to 120 seconds. Skip on startup. If you don't want your radio nattering at you when you start up and you're using pre-flight checks to make sure everything's set and the right thing, turn this on. It will make your radio way less annoying. I'm, I use the pre-flight checks when I start the model to set my switch positions as I want them when I am ready to start the engine or put the pack in. So I don't want it constantly chirping at me telling me what's set. I use that to set stuff in flight and set my warnings. Now, you may want the radio to read back your setup. That's perfectly valid setup. And in that case, don't set skip on startup. Just have it ready to go. Actually, let's go, before we get into play value, let's go back. I'm just clicking out on system, file manager. Here you can see on my radio, first folder is audio. And in here I have all my WAV files. And I've got a bunch. This is a mixture I've put together over the years. It's basically an Amber 2.2 sound pack for OpenTX with a bunch of Mike Shalim's custom audio for his glider uh, his glider templates for both OpenTX and EdgeTX and then some custom stuff I've done over there so it's it's inconsistent in the voice I don't care I just want the thing talking back to me if you want a consistent voice you can build a custom audio set yourself uh, using a program like TTS Automate but you can see I have a lot of audio I really do need to organize those when the multiple voice function comes in with 1.5 And that's, again, file manager in audio, not in a subdirectory. You see the CN subdirectory? Go in there. That's empty. That only holds the system files, which are used for your system callouts and not your play track. Let's go back here. In our special functions. So, play value. Again, your value is going to be any analog value you can get out there. Tel telemetry, system value, trainer, gyro, switches. And by the way, when it says gyro there, that's the gyro in the radio. Your gyro data for the gyro in the airplane is a telemetry value. And they've got special, which will say minimum, maximum, zero. That's one of those things. This is object oriented. It's grabbing classes. Classes is all analog values. So special is meaningless for this, even if it is valid. So you have, and trainer gives your trainer channels. If you want your trainer on off, that'll be a system value. Right now I've just got main, RTC, and clock as valid ones set up for this particular one. I would normally use trainer at trainer active as a switch. Actually, I think if we go here, and we go to system event. Right now, I've got hold, cut, and RSSI low. There are other system events available if you have that enabled. Again, repeat works the same way as play track, as the skip and startup. One important item: if you have multiple play value and play tracks go active, they play from top to bottom. So if you want to do a call out of multiple values, just make a list, put them in order, and they will play in that order, as long as they've got a, the same active condition each time. Ethos processes from top to bottom. Now, I'll just clone this. Clone makes a uh, an obvious copy, and edit. Now we'll go down, haptic, is going to have active active condition. It's got a set of patterns. 
what it can do is buzz a number. It doesn't have any custom patterns, but it's got long and short. So you've got one long, two long, all the way through three long, and then five long, and then one short, two short, three short, five short, and then there's some short long combinations. You've got short long, short short long, short long short, and long short long. Strength, you can pick how strong it is, and the repeat again is once. This will always play on startup if it is, goes active though. It does not have skip on startup. And that really is special functions. They're not that complex. The last one in the list, of course, is write logs, and I covered that originally. Again, remember, if you want to use it as a global, it's going to be in every single one of your models. It's going to have the same active condition. That active condition has to be global. Not in every model. Global. Global is a system level condition, so which means switches, switch positions, true, false, or system events. Not logic switches or flight modes or anything like that. Those are local, even if you've got all your models set up the same way. It's a programming thing, namespace, is you've got local, which is specific to the model, even if it's done the same way. And then you've got global, which is across the whole system. With that is special functions.